This concludes our official opening ceremony, and it is now my pleasure to welcome SUMA President Gordon Barnhart for the President's Address. Thank you very much, Randy, and good morning, everyone. I uh, was going to uh, acknowledge his honor, the left the governor and the platform guests, but they have now departed, and it's been such a pleasure to see all of them here this morning. I also want to say a warm welcome to all of our visitors uh, in the province and from across this nation. I also understand that Ger Georgina Jolibwa, Member of Parliament, is also here, and so I uh, introduce her as well. So welcome to you, as well as all of the others that were introduced. Randy spoke about the uh, hometown advantage, and that's going to be a theme for me as well today. But first off, I want to just reminisce with you for just a moment. Being in this room reminds me of two years ago when you chose me as your president, and I am deeply honored to be your president. And it's such a pleasure to see all of you here today. And I hope that we are serving you well, and we are trying our very best to make life better for all of the people of Saskatchewan. I think that one of the ways that we can make things better is to be listening to you and to hear what you have to say, what your concerns are within your community. And part of that is by visiting you in your hometowns. And so I've been traveling through Saskatchewan to the cities, the towns, villages, resort villages, and northern communities to listen to you as to what you think are the issues that need to be addressed in last spring, 2018, uh, our CEO, uh, Jean-Marc Nadeau, our Vice President of Villages, Mike Strachan, and our Northern Representative, Bobby Woods, and myself met with the Executive of New North in La Ronge. And we talked about revenue sharing, development, crime rates, and how SUMA can work even more closely with New North. We already have plans to see them again in the North this coming May. It's my pleasure to also be meeting with you in the regional meetings, and I'm proud to say that I've been now for the last two years at all seven of the regional meetings. I find this an invigorating experience, the seven days of being in your communities and hearing to what you have to say, to get positive feedback or negative feedback, whichever it may be, but to try and make sure that we are listening to what you are needing and wanting. I've also had the pleasure to, and sometimes it's a hard one to do, of working with communities that are in deep trouble. And I, uh, this one wasn't a trouble one though, but I was uh, honored to uh, host and, and MC a town meeting in the town of Wadena. And they were concerned about maybe there might be some issues raised, and so I was there and we had a wonderful meeting together and a good exchange of ideas, and I think a bonding of bringing the community together. Sometimes in the last year I've had a couple of occasions, and I will again in three weeks, be in communities where they're struggling. They're having internal conflict within their council, uh, they're finding that their problems are insurmountable, and so I go to these communities, not with a magic wand, but with a listening ear and hopefully some advice to help them or to steer them in a direction that will help. And so all of this is meaning that I'm doing a lot of traveling on your behalf and hopefully that will bring some solutions across this board. Our CEO as well has been doing traveling. He has a commitment within the four years to have covered all of the regions. In the last little while, he's covered three of the regions 85 communities. He, if he hasn't been to your region yet, be patient. He's doing it one month by one month, and I say congratulations to you, Jean-Marc. That is a huge accomplishment. Part of Hometown Advantage is showing our pride in our community, and each one of you, I'm sure, has a story of something that you're proud about from your community. And I'm just going to share one. You know that I represent, uh, I'm part of the town council in Saltcoats. We had a community come together and say, we have 75 youth that want to play ball. And our ball diamonds are in need of repair, and the nets and the stands are all in need of repair. And they asked the town council to put up a line of credit of $30,000, which we did. They have been fundraising faster than they can spend, and they haven't touched this line of credit yet, but it's there to give them security. 
they've not only upgraded the existing di ball diamonds, but they've created a new one. So this, l this last fall I said, okay, you said you had 75 people wanting to play ball. How many did you get? 75. And that to me is how communities can pull together through the town council, but not necessarily the two town council doing it all, but to make sure that you're there to support the community. And that makes me feel very proud, and I'm sure you're proud of your community as well. I want to dispel a myth as well in terms of who we are. I often hear, oh yeah, Suma, you represent the cities. Well, we represent the villages and the towns, the smaller villages, the cities, northern communities and resort villages as well. And so I just want you to be very proud of that as well, that Suma has a broad mandate representing 80% of the population. Now we also face some problems. When I'm meeting you at the door coming in yesterday and today, I say, so how is it going in your particular community? Nine times out of 10, you say infrastructure, sewer, water, landfill, those sorts of things. Some of you are saying, great, we're doing an extremely good job and things are going well. But those are some of the areas that we need to work on together, along with the provincial government and the federal government, to try and make sure that our infrastructure is brought up to date. And that will come through partnerships, cooperation, education. And if we are working together, towns and villages together, but also with the RMs, we can do more with less. And we can't just say to the province, roll out a few more million dollars, keep coming, we also have to show that we can do more by working together. In the education side, we are making great progress in working with Saskatchewan Polytechnic, and I'm now talking specifically to the administrators in the room, because there's been some frustration with the LGA program. So we've been working with U of R to see if we can't put some more beef on the plate with that. But we are also very hopeful that SAS Poly will come together and offer some good training for CAOs. We also have a goal of trying to have a baccalaureate, a degree for administrators. Not necessarily that that would be uh, a requirement, but it would be to enhance your education. The whole point of it, though, is to give you the tools when you're working in their small communities to make sure that you're able to do a good job for your citizens. We are also working in terms of the LGA to make improvements. The MLDP is working really well and we're working with government relations and SARM to enhance that even more. But we're not only working just with the CEOs, but with the mayors and the councillors. And you are very well aware of our summer school. And this year we had a new twist, which I think went really well. We opened it up not only to mayors, but to all the councillors, and we opened it up to SARM. And we had one Reeve come, and I think we're going to have more in the future. It has proven that it's a great educational tool on helping people learn the role of council, the role of the mayor, and how to be able to work together even better. We are also offering webinars, and I don't know if all of you are experiencing that. This is basically free. It's not a very large cost. Through your computers, you can have your whole council come together in your office. And we have had uh, webinars on cannabis legislation, workplace work policies, bylaw, tax enforcement, to name just a few. And as I say, it's inexpensive. You don't have to travel. You don't have to have hotels. You can have it right in your community. We have many more of those planned for the coming year. Collaboration is another way that we can be stronger, and Ray has mentioned that in terms of working with SUMA. Thank you very much, by the way, Ray, for being here today. I think this is a first in terms of having the president of SARM address our convention. You did well, Ray, and we're happy to be working with you. Thank you very much for being here today. I also, yes. We are also working in other ways with SARM and UMass, the uh, Municipal Association of Administrators, the Government of Saskatchewan, on the Municipal Peer Network. This is a group of administrators, councillors, government representatives, offering advice 
to councils that are in trouble, that are having difficulties within their communities. And we hope that if you are in need of that sort of advice, get a hold of us or get a hold of the peer network. It's a partnership to make sure that we are working together to solve our problems. We are also very closely connected with the Federation of Canadian Municipalities. Garth, it's nice to have you here this morning. Uh, I look forward to seeing you at our board meeting in a few weeks' time. This is an organization from across Canada where we are working as one voice with governments, federal and provincial, to make sure that we have the best possible representation at that level of government. One of the other partnerships that I want to just quickly address is SUMA Advantage. This, as you know, is a group purchasing arrangement whereby we are able to offer you purchasing power in a group way. And we've been adding new products to this uh, kind of weekly, really. We now have dust suppressant, water meter solutions, greater blades, to just name three things that are being offered to you but not only offered to you by a vendor, but we now are able to offer two, three, four vendors so that it's even more accessible in your community. This is trade compliant, eliminates tendering. You get the best price possible. So I hope if you haven't been using Sum Advantage, take a look at it. We have a booth downstairs or talk to us. We'd be happy to steer you in that direction. In terms of Resolutions. We have the Town of Aberdeen and the SUMA Board is sponsoring a discussion today on uh, development and implementation of cannabis excise tax sharing. You're very well aware that there was an agreement between the provinces and the federal government that excise would be charged on cannabis. The federal government would keep 25 percent. 75 would come to the province with 25 percent of that to 75 was to come to the municipal level of government. And you well know that we have costs involved with the legalization of cannabis. And so I'm hoping that you will have good participation in that discussion, but also help us lobby the provincial government to make sure that we are getting our share of that excise tax. Thank you. One last thing, and it's something that's really troubling me a lot, and it's right here. We have some of our members, villages, that are becoming small and becoming smaller. And they are really struggling. And we have a new effort that we're going to make. And somebody might say, well, it's, it's too late or we can't help at all. We can help. These villages are hometowns to the people that are living in these villages. And so we're, we will have a board meeting in March and we're going to discuss this more, so I can't get into much of the detail yet. But we have to look first at regional cooperation. We are also talking about, and whether we'll head in this direction, I'm not sure, but municipal districts, whereby perhaps some villages and RMs will work together as an equal partnership to be able to cost share and be able to solve some of those economic problems that the smallest communities are facing. So stay tuned. If you're in one of those communities that you're really wondering how can you exist over the next five or 10 years, I would like to hear from you or let anybody in SUMA know, let our board members know, we would like to be able to be part of the solution and offer actually some leadership to the province of Saskatchewan. So we offer lobbying, advocacy on your behalf. We want to be able to help you save money. We want to help you access resources to make your community that much better. And we do that through the convention that you're at now. We have our educational sessions, yesterday particularly, breakout sessions, the trade show, resolutions that are coming up this afternoon, dialogue with ministers. I hope that you have a chance to talk to some of the ministers. We have two members of parliament here has been mentioned. And we have the, the uh, Premier coming later this morning, the Bear Pit session tomorrow. I hope that you will embrace all of these opportunities. Don't be shy, but embrace them and say, I'm from the community of whatever, and this is what we see. These are the good things that are happening. This is what we need more of. So I say a warm welcome to you. Thank you very much for being here. I look forward to the dialogue over the next couple of days. Don't be afraid. Approach me and say, my name is and this is my thoughts. So 
Thank you for being here. A warm welcome.